program signed. Um, okay, members, order. We're now in public session. We have a quorum, and the committee will now start its deliberations. I welcome you to today's meeting of the Public Accounts Committee. Members, mobile phones must be sent to airplane mode or turned off. It is not sufficient to put mobiles on silent mode as they continue to interfere with the Assembly recording. This session is being recorded in video and audio and can be uh, accessed live via online streaming either on the Assembly website or Democracy Live. As I've said, we're now in public session. Agenda item one, apologies. Apologies for Mr Hilditch. Are there any others? Okay. Agenda item two, the minutes of the <coughs> meeting of the 10th of December, pages 6 to 12, your pack. Um, are members content that I sign these minutes as being true and accurate record? Okay. Meeting. Okay, thank you. Agenda <coughs> item three then. Declaration of members' interests. At each meeting, members are required to register relevant financial or other interests in the members' interests. Um, have any members any interest to declare this afternoon? No. Agenda item four then. Matters arising. Page 15 of your pack and also in your table pack. Um, members are referred to uh, the memo dated the 11th of December 2020 from Kyle Bingham in the Northern Ireland Audit Office, which uh, is a page 15 of your pack. This is in regard to the further information members requested from last week's discussion on the ministerial direction in relation to uh, Derry City Airport and the £1.2 million uh, intervention from the Department of Infrastructure Minister uh, to the end of March 2021. I think at this point um, we will invite Mr Donnelly, Mr Allen and Mr Bingham to join us for the meeting. Members, and as you will be aware now, there have been a number of ministerial directions issued by Northern Ireland departments. Mr. Bingham has provided some useful comparative information on numbers of MDs in England and the publication of MDs in Wales. Uh, and you perhaps might want to have a look at that in your pack, as I've said, um, page 15 of your pack. And at this stage, I would welcome Mr. Donnelly, Mr. Allen, and Mr. Bingham. To the meeting. Good afternoon, gentlemen. You're very welcome. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. Um, we're just discussing the um, ministerial directive last week in relation to the infrastructure minister, uh, Nicola Mallon, uh, in terms of the MD in regards to the city of airport, city of uh, Derry Airport in London. Derry. And I just wanted to um, ask if any of you had anything you wanted to um, add on that, Mr. Donnelly or Mr. Bingham in particular. Um, just one thing, Chair. Um, in the discussion last week, I think it was Mr. O'Toole that registered the point that uh, where can you find all these directions in, in one place? Because in, in Whitehall, you can go to a website and find them. Um, I've raised that during the week with the Permanent Secretary, and she'd be more than happy to set up a get a website up and running where you can find all the directions in, in one place one place. There's no difficulty with that. Uh, and I think we can help because we have some of the back catalogue of directions. So it's use, useful that you know anybody <coughs> could look at them in the round. They're, they're all in, in, in one place. And these would be um, MDs across the nine government departments in Northern Ireland, yes? Not just, yes. Not just, uh, um, uh, because even yourself, we often get queries, you know, how many directions have there been this last couple of years, and okay. just to put your finger on that uh, would be would be helpful. Okay. Members, anyone, any queries or questions? Uh, before we come to the one about um, Belfast International and the George Best Airport, any, everyone happy enough in terms of the um, situation in London Day, or anyone, any questions? Everybody happy enough? Okay. Um, Okay. It would appear, as Mr Donnelly has alluded to it, that there is less transparency, and I think I made the point last week, you know, we needed to see more transparency around these issues. Um, so I was going to suggest that we perhaps write to the Department of Finance encouraging greater public transparency from 
um, the ministers in terms of ministerial directions. Um, <clears throat> do we want to do that, given what Mr Donnelly has just said, or are you happy enough to um, allow that to happen? Do you think it would be an idea for us to write as well, to reinforce the point? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, yeah. I think that would be good. Idea. Okay. Well, then, I, I would, um, if you're content, propose that there's a committee we write and ask for more transparency around these issues. Um, we are talking about significant amounts of money, um, and I think I think uh, you know having a one-stop shop where people can go to to get that information is eminently sensible in terms of openness and transparency. Member agree? Members agree? Agreed. Yeah. Chair, sorry, who do you write to? Well, we'd have to we'd have to write in the, the, the this context. I would imagine, from our perspective, you would have been speaking to the permanent secretary in infrastructure, were you? Uh, no, sorry, it's the permanent secretary in finance. I'm, I was uh, going to say it was the, uh, the, so, the, so the permanent secretary in finance that I would be writing to you. Yeah. Uh, uh, she would take ownership yeah. of the thing, and I think uh, in GB it's it's probably something the treasury team that would, yeah. would do likewise. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I write to Sue Gray then. To your agreement. Thank you. Okay, I then refer to a letter dated the 14th of December 2020 from Mr. Kieran Donnelly, the Controller and Auditor General. In your pack, pages three to four, a ministerial direction for consideration the urgent COVID temporary time limited financial support for Belfast International Airport and Belfast City Airport. The Permanent Secretary of the Department of Finance, Sue Gray, wrote to Mr. Donnelly on the 11th of December um, 2020 to advise that she had received a ministerial direction. Uh, from the Department of Finance Minister, Mr. Connor Murphy, MLA, in relation to this. You also see in your pack the accompanying correspondence from the Permanent Secretary to the um, DOF, uh, Permanent Secretary Sue Gray, dated the 11th uh, of December, in your table pack, pages 5 to 6, and correspondence from the Minister of Finance, Mr. Murphy, dated the 8th of December, 2020, in your packs, pages 7 to 16. Do members want a few minutes to read these? And we'll take a, a short break to read them. Is that okay? Or? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll take a break. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound.
This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed.
This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Sound.
This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. Okay, order members. Um, members, the um, so the ministerial direction for a provision of 7.8 million in total of temporary financial support to Belfast International Airport and up to 3.7 million uh, and Belfast City uh, Airport, George Best City Airport, up to 4.1 million, in light of the significant financial difficulties both are continuing to face as a result of COVID-19 and the need to ensure. Uh, a continued and functioning airport infrastructure throughout uh, Northern Ireland until March 2021. Last week's meeting, the committee considered a ministerial direction for the city of Ur uh, Derry Airport through to March 2021. Mr. Donnelly, would you like to speak on those directions? Uh, yes. Um, these new directions just come through last Friday, the day after we were mm -hmm. discussing the city of Derry Airport. Uh, I think the key is that it's emergency funding, and the case for the direction was insufficient time to do a full economic appraisal. Uh, that said, um, there does seem to be some reasonable controls around these payments. Uh, they are capped uh, certainly at 70 per cent of monthly uh, losses. Uh, they are conditional on the submission of accounts. Uh, Conditional on open book accounting, uh, and that the airports kind of pay, you know, dividend to shareholders this year or, or next, and there will be no redundancies during the, uh, the support period. So there does seem to be some reasonable control there. Uh, the, both airports have faced exceptional pressures, uh, and passenger levels have uh, really reduced markedly. Uh, in the case of the International Airport, from nearly 400,000 in last November 19 to 36,000 this November. Um, so that's really all I want to say at this point, Chair. Okay. Mr. Muir. Thanks. Um, maybe one question, not really for yourselves, but for us to go back to the department around this, would be that um, I've been lobbied quite significantly over the last number of months by some of the airports looking for financial assistance. It's been a very clear case being made for assistance. But then to come to this stage now and require ministerial direction because they can't value, uh, satisfy themselves in terms of value for money and in terms of the, the, the justification for it, to me, that should have, there's plenty of time to be able to have done that examination and to have built that case rather than leaving it to the last minute. So I would feel that that, that should have that homework could have been done a long time ago. The other one was is that there was no ministerial directions required for the first wave when there was support given to both City of Derry Airport and Belfast City Airport. So why there was no ministerial directions required then but required now is something I would need to get clarity on as well. Uh, yeah, I would agree. There, there, there are issues that uh, there would be value in getting more clarity on those points. Okay. 
I, I think as well in, in relation to the, the ministerial direction in terms of the course ones we have, there's, there's clear um, issues in terms of the protections and whatever that there are in terms of the two payments to the two Belfast airports. The, the, the money going to the airport in London is going to the council. And perhaps if we get if we get some more information around that as well, that would be useful. Okay. Mr. O'Toole. Thank you. Um Chair, presumably the the value for money formulation for an airport which is effectively in public ownership, which is the City of Derry, is is that different in substance than it would be if to money going to a um privately owned um I mean that one is one's owned by a well, they're both owned by they're both subsidiaries of broader groups, Belfast City and Belfast International. But is there a, is the is the approach different when accounting for the value for money or assessing? There's a couple of points. Uh, I suppose it's important. Then there's a level playing field between operator market, and that's why we have state aid rules. Level playing field, state aid, very relevant pertinent uh, subjects. Are, and minutes. those rules still apply even though we're, we haven't left the EU yet. So, uh, and that's covered in the. In the, in the documentation. Uh, so, in principle, there shouldn't be really any difference. But uh, for uh, private sector uh, airports, I suppose um, you know there, there wouldn't normally be any case for a public subsidy. They're commercial operations, so it's purely in unique circumstances of COVID, and uh, then there is a special case for emergency funding. But they're, they're, they are fundamentally different in the sense that the City of Derry is a publicly owned entity which um, has been um, uh, had subvention support, uh, including via the UK, both via the UK government and to the council. Obviously, the, the revenue have come via the council's both rates and direct grant from the executive. But it's in a categorically different place because it's publicly owned, and, there, and a decision has been made to. For, for, for it to remain in public ownership and for it to be subsidised in that way, which is different from um, the, the two Belfast airports, which are businesses. Uh, yes. Yeah. But it is a, it is a matter at the, at the end of the day, ultimately, for the the ratepayer in Londonderry uh, around these issues, uh, and uh, you know the, the the feasibility of the, this airport, and it's not for us to get involved in that. Is entirely a matter for Derry City Council and uh, how they continue to to fund it. And I'd just like to point out that, like any other public utility, uh, it's not there. I would say really to um, uh, provide a profit. We'll say to shareholders because in this case we are talking about a public utility that provides a service uh, uh, within the northwest itself, and we know it and carrying out that type of. Uh, Valuation, all of that will have to be put into consideration as well, too. Uh, and I know that in the case of Dairy City and the Manchester Council, that they're already at that point themselves and evaluating uh, to what extent it is that as rate pairs now that they can continue uh, uh, with regards to ownership and that of the airport. And from what I've heard anyway, too, that uh, it's quite possible that you may find that there's private enterprise interested in moving. Uh, in that direction as well as Derry City and Stavand as the council uh, airport is concerned, you know. So <clears throat> I think that the, even now in reading the papers for today's meeting, uh, and I'd have thought myself looking at as well too, that even though we are talking here about private enterprise in relation to the airports uh, in the Belfast area, uh, at the end of the day too, that um, we all know that we can't do without our airports, it's mm. as simple as that. And that it's not just a case of uh, do the books balance, i.e., in terms of money in, money out, and uh, are they balancing in that respect? But there's other things that have to be taken into consideration there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mr. Bank. <coughs> I, I think we all appreciate that there are exceptional circumstances at present, but I'm thinking going forward, um, uh, if there is a requirement for ongoing public money for three airports, it'll be a big question mark over that in my mind. Um, mm. Uh, particularly as, frankly, I would thought most people have no problem driving to Dublin if they need to go there to get a flight, never mind drive to Belfast, so never mind pay for three airports, paying for two airports, do we need to pay you know, for such 
uh, extensive infrastructure for what is a relatively small region. So at some point there may be a value of just, just bring members back to the point. The we're talking about the airport in London area is because they got subvention from the ministerial direction. Otherwise, it would not be uh, you know, the business of this committee because, it's, as I said, it is a council-run facility. Uh, and the only reason we're talking about is because they got subvention and, dire and a ministerial direction from Minister for Infrastructure. Uh, in terms of the, the airport's future, the airport's future is purely a matter for the electoral representatives in Londonderry and the repairs there. So I just want to bring, bring that issue to a close. Any other member, any issue on that? Okay. Right. Okay. I then um, members refer to correspondence dated the 15th of December 2020 from Sir Long, the Chief Executive of the EA, in your table pack, page 15, 17. <clears throat> Ms. Long confirms the work of the Programme Board in progressing uh, is progressing, and that the ongoing HR investigations are not preventing uh, or delaying this. Uh, members, can I just say um, I welcome that. It took us a while to get to this point. I don't know why, but it has took us a while to get to this point. So I appreciate that clarity, uh, and um, I'm reassured that um, the Chief Executive has now informed us that the, the ongoing issues, HR issues, which are not the business uh, of this uh, committee, uh, are not impeding the progress of this important internal piece of work. We have to remember this internal piece of work is about special educational needs and the effect that has on our young people out there. So, uh, in welcoming that, I am pleased to hear that. But I, I do think, and I would like this committee then to, to write back and thank the Chief Executive for that clarity, but then to ask when will we know when this work is going to be completed, because it is hugely important for the young people out there, uh, for, their, for their teachers and for their families. Uh, a hugely important and sensitive issue, special educational needs. So, is the committee content that we do that? Okay, thank you, members. Okay, agenda item five, uh, correspondence, pages 17 to 47, your pack. I refer to correspondence to the 8th of December 2020 from Mr. Um, Robert Crawford to the Minister of Communities, at pages 18 to 20 of your pack, in reference to the Charity Commission for Northern Ireland. Mr. Crawford has copied the PAC and the Communities Committee into this correspondence, which he is requesting to clarify from clarification from the Minister on uh, any action taken following the recommendations out of the John Boehm uh, uh, review following the Court of Appeal judgment on the 19th of February 2019. I also refer to correspondence dated uh, the 8th of December 2020 from Mr Trevor McKee at pages 21 and 22 of your pack and his email to the Department of Communities regarding the Charity Commission for Northern Ireland. In his letter, he refers to the Minister's announcements that the Department will commission an independent review of charity regulation, including a review of the performance of the Charity Commission in its role uh, as statutory regulator. Members, are you content that we forward copies uh, of both correspondence to the Audit Office, uh, which has an interest in this matter as well? Great. Great. Agreed. Thank you very much. I refer to correspondence dated the 8th of December 2020, pages 23 to 25, your pack from Ms. Tracy Maharg, the Accounting Officer, Department uh, for Communities, regarding Kisson Park and further information requested from the evidence session on the 12th, 12th of November 2020. Ms. Maharg has provided details of meetings held with local resident groups uh, regarding Kisson Park development, details of the sub regional stadium development and how work is progressing, details on who sits in the sub regional stadium stakeholder group, and details of their recent survey and the details on Casement Park's future business plan, including holding major sporting tournaments. Now, um, I don't want to get into a discussion about this today because we, we have sent uh, a letter, if you remember, uh, at our meeting about the traffic management and all of that. So we haven't received that response back as yet. So I think it's best if we just hold this off until we get the other, and then we can deal with this issue holistically. Are members agreed? Agreed. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, I refer to correspondence dated the 11th of December 2020 at pages 26 to 45 of your pack from Pivotal, an independent think tank. Included in their correspondence is a report on education skills and training for young people aged 14 to 19. The overview of the report is that education skills and training reform uh, must be at the centre of Northern Ireland's long-term economic recovery plan in order to develop a modern workforce in the future. 
At our meeting on the 20th of February 2020, the committee had previously considered inviting Pivotal to the committee. Can I suggest that we look at our forward work programme and consider uh, inviting Pivotal in the new year? Great. Great. Uh, I refer to correspondence uh, dated the 14th of December 2020 from Prof Professor Paul Bartholomew, Vice Chancellor and President of the U Ulster University, at pages 46 of your pack regarding information on the university's recruitment policies and procedures for appointments to the University Council and the approval mechanism for these amendments. Any comments you wish to make? Okay. Um, members content to note. I referred to an email from Sir Leah Flynn received recently from uh, Stephen Agnew, Head of Renewable NI, at pages 47 of your pack. Mr Agnew's email states that the Northern Ireland Audit Office is due to present to the Public Accounts Committee on Thursday, and I thought to take the opportunity to remind you of Renewable NI's com complaint attached uh, to the Audit Office in respect of generating electricity uh, from Renewable Energy Report. In his uh, email, Mr Agnew has asked for the opportunity to brief the Public Accounts Committee. Um, can I suggest that we write to Mr Agnew, stating that Ms Flynn has brought this email to the Committee's attention and that the commencement of the inquiry into the generating electricity from renewable energy will be held uh, at the end of January. Members will be briefed uh, on the Northern Ireland Audit Office report on the 21st of January and the first evidence session will be on the 28th of January. The committee will then be better informed at that point to decide what other witnesses it wishes to invite to give evidence and will write to Mr Agnew at this point. Um, okay. Mr Donnelly, would you like to come in at this point? Uh, well, of course, Mr Agnew has also written to us and yeah. uh, about to arrange a meeting with him uh, to discuss these, these issues. Yeah. My, my view is I have um, I also have received correspondence from Mr. New. My view is that this committee um, can only really take evidence when we are fully aware and briefed on these things. So I think um, Mr. Mr. Agnew has asked to meet uh, the public accounts uh, the um, public accounts committee, but he's also issues that he needs to discuss and raise with the uh, Northern Ireland Audit Office. I would therefore suggest, and I've spoken to the clerk about this, uh, that perhaps Mr Agnew should have his meeting with the Audit Office first um, before he would come to this committee uh, as well. We have limited time at this committee. I, I'm not averse to meeting Stephen Agnew, but I would expect to receive uh, a written correspondence about what the key issues are and then mm. to judge whether or not there's further things that need yeah. I'll do rather and than that, saying yes straight away. So I, that, that, that's fair enough. But I'm just making about Mr. Donnelly. You know, reg and his team regularly advise this committee. Once they've had their meeting, they'll be better, better in a position to advise us at that point. Members agreed. Agreed. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Um, I also received correspondence from Mr. Agnew, and I think uh, you gave me a copy of the complaint that he had made to yourself. I can't recall whether you had said that you had replied to that correspondence. <coughs> And if you had, would it be possible to get a copy of that reply so just to acquaint ourselves with what the response was? Uh, we had a, an initial reply. I think it might have been side copied into this committee. It may have in a old <coughs> age. So. Yes, uh, so we'll double check that. Uh, but um, we, we, in our reply back, we, we suggested we should meet, and I think that, that, that will happen. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think sometime <coughs> soon. So um, uh, we, I can report back yeah. uh, 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 the outcome of that. Yep, I understand, from the clerk. We, it was in your pack. Um, can I, can, can I, can I just ask then that we follow the course of action as I've set out? That you know, we we uh, await the meeting that uh, Mr. Donnelly and his team. I think you've been trying to organise a meeting with <coughs> Mr. Agnew for some weeks. Once that meeting is held, then we will take evidence from the the or. Get a briefing from you, not take evidence, but get a briefing from the audit office around that issue, and then we'll make take it further from then, and we can discuss that issue at that date. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. And for transparency, I've also received correspondence and engaged with Mr. Yeah. Newham. Sure suspect everybody all members has. Have. Yeah. All members have. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, then members, I refer to correspondence from Mr. Gray, the accounting officer and permanent secretary, Department of Finance, dated the 16th of December, 2020, in your table packet, page 18, regarding the memorandum of reply to PAC's report into major capital projects. Ms Gray states that due to the nature of the recommendation, she is keen to consult 
the Northern Ireland Civil Service Board members to seek their views and collectively agree the wording of their responses. This will unfortunately impact the time frame uh, of the uh, MOR, which will now be the end of January. Members content? I think it's better to have that uh, holistic approach, and I, I actually <coughs> welcome that initiative that she's taken as well. It shows, in my view, that it is a, it's been taken seriously, and I think that's a compliment to the committee, uh, and it's work to date around that issue. So, um, with that, members, I will then propose that we go into closed session. Members agreed? Agreed. Agreed. This is the Northern Ireland.